Here's the pre-calc. It's problem CL8-160. It is such a long problem, I'm going to let you go ahead and read through it on your own. I'm just going to kind of try to quickly show how I did the problem. So the very first, so it gives you this um, table. And the very first thing, I know you can't really see it. The very first thing I did is I just labeled hours in here, like, because we're, sp still bleh, we're supposed to start at 5 a.m. So that would be the zeroth term or whatever, the zeroth hour, one, two, three, four, five. And I wrote it really small and light where you can't see. And it turns out I counted all these and there's 23 of them. So these hours um, coincide with, or they correspond with time. So, and then I went through and I tried to estimate, like, I looked at the numbers and I said, well, it's going down. It's getting lower and lower and lower. And then this is right, this is the lowest point. So I wrote a little L on it because it was the lowest point and I could see that's the bottom of my curve because we know it's going to be like a curve that goes up and down like that. And then that's kind of how I did all this. I tried to estimate um, the lows and the highs I got. I found those first just by following the numbers, just watching the trends. Like I saw that it, um, after it hit my low, it started increasing until right here at the 20 and then it decreased again. So I put a star there for the high and it goes down. And then once I identified the lows and the highs, I figured out what the middle would be. And so, think, I mean, if, if that doesn't make sense, try it for yourself. Try following the numbers. Go through first and find the lows. And then find the highs. Like here's a high point. Here's another high point. And then I got the middles by just um, counting how many it is between the lows and the highs. Like. So there would be three um, on each side. So the middle was 15. So then I, I, I went ahead and um, estimated that said use nice round numbers. So I used 10s for the lows and I used 15s for the middle and um, 20s for the highs. And then I wanted to make it like kind of like y equals a times sine b of x minus h plus k. So I actually made myself a little graph and I'm just um, identifying like my first low was in the fourth hour. You can see like there's the fourth hour and that was at 9 a.m. That was my first low. So I put, I think what I did is I put the lows in on, and these are just what hours they happened in and then I put the highs in. There were only two uh, highs and I made those coincide with the hours and then I found then I went through and found all the, the middles and I wrote M's on them for like the midline. And those are all lined up with what hour they happened. And so that gives me a curve so that now I can um, figure out my phase shift. Like I can see that the first middle number isn't really, it's, it's at one. Well, it is, it's at one. So um, that tells me that it's gonna be shifted, a horizontal shift is going to be one. And then I wanted to know what's the period. So I just looked at when it crosses the midline. So at one and 13. So that is 12. And then I remembered period is two pi over B. So I wrote 12 equals two pi over B. And then I, um, I cross multiplied. 12 times B equals two times pi. And I ended up with B is pi over 6. So I stuck that in where the period where B goes. And then I could see that it goes down first and then up. So that, that's why it's negative um, amplitude. And it is 5. The amplitude is 5 because the midline is at 15 and the high is at 20 and the low is at 10. So that gives me an amplitude of 5. And then um, that's the midline or the center line was 15. So here's my equation. And then letter B, they asked me, um, what time is it 
because Otis's girlfriend wants to know for sure that he's really at the dock. So um, what was the water level at 7.30 p.m.? So at 7.30 p.m., we don't have a number for 7.30. If you look on your table, there's a number for 7 and a number for 8. And really lightly in there, I have that 7 is at the 14th hour and 8 is at the 15th hour. So I'm going to use 14.5 as my hour because that's halfway between 7 and 8. So I plugged in 14.5 into my model. And then I'm just going to solve it and find out how high the water is. So I went ahead and used, you have to use the order of operations and be very careful. I tried to kind of show a few of the steps here. It turns out I have a nice calculator that um, when I typed that into my calculator in radian mode, like just pi over 6 times 13 and a half and took the sign of it, I got root 2 over 2. And then if you just type that into your calculator, you'll get 11.46. So at 7.30 p.m., which was the 14.5th hour, then the water was 11.46 feet. So, and then we're going to do letter C. So letter C, um, letter C was asking, while Otis is sitting, he notices the water is, it goes past the 14 foot mark several times. Using your model, determine all of the times when the water reached the 14 foot level. So I just got, I got this out and I, I just kind of drew a horizontal line at 14, just so I can kind of understand what's happening with the patterns of this thing. And so, I mean, it looks like it's probably at the second hour or something, but we'll figure it out exactly. So um, how did I figure it out? I solved this for 14. So remember it was y equals negative 5 sine, blah, blah, blah. Um, I want to know when the water level is exactly 14. So then I, I just did algebra on it. Like I subtract 15 on both sides. 14 minus 15 was negative 1. And then I divided, because I had this negative 5 out here, I divided both sides by negative 5. And I got 1 fifth was um, equal to this. And then this is where it got a little weird. We want the x by itself, but the x is being acted upon by sine. So this whole thing right here is called the argument. So what we have to do to get this away from the sine is to actually unsign it or to inverse sine both sides. So when I inverse sine 1 fifth, 1 fifth is the same as 0.2. I get this over here. When I inverse sine the right-hand side, I, I'm just left with what was in the argument, okay? And then I just um, multiplied both sides by, well, I, I pushed the button on my calculator that was um, sine inverse of uh, 0.2, and I get this little decimal here. And then I decided I need to get rid of this pi over 6, so I multiplied both sides by 6 over pi to make it go away. And then I put that into my, I already had that number in my calculator, and I multiplied it by 6 over pi, and I got that lovely decimal. And then I saw that x was almost by itself. All I had to do was just add 1 to it. So x is 1.38-ish. That's how many hours before the um before we hit, like the first time that the water level hit 14 was one, was after 1.38 hours had passed. Now remember the zeroth hour was 5 a.m. So 5 a.m. plus 1.38 is what we have to do. So unfortunately, 1.38 hours, we don't know how many minutes 0.38 of an, like, 0.38, 38 hundredths of an hour, how many darn minutes is that? So I did it like this. I said 38 is to 100, because that's 38 hundredths, as x is to 60, because that's how minutes work. I did cross products. I went 60 times 38, and then I divided by 100. And I got that um, this 
the point three H, that's about 23 minutes. It's 22.8. So now I know that in one hour and 23 minutes um, after five, because we started this whole, if you remember, this whole graph starts at five, like the zero is, the zeroth hour is five. So I have to add one hour and 23 minutes. I had to convert my minutes and I get 6.23 a.m. So that's the first time that our water level hit some um, 14 feet. Okay, and then the rest of them, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I want to kind of use the, um, the symmetry of my graph. So I can look at my graph and I know that I know that I had a low right here at four at the fourth hour. The fourth hour happens to be 9 a.m. I think. And I know that however far it is between um, the first time the water hits the 14 feet and this low point, there's going to be a symmetry here and here just because of the way my graph goes. So I want to find out how how much time passed between when I hit the 14 feet the first time and this low point? Because if I can find out what that time interval is, I can add. I can just add it to this. This fourth hour is 9 a.m. I think. So, and I do end up finding out that it's two hours and 37 minutes. I'll show you how I found it. So, the fourth hour, like I said, is 9 a.m. 9 a.m minus 623, that gives me that interval that I said I was looking for. I'm trying to find, see, so this, this ends up being 623 a.m. and that's 9 a.m. So just do some subtraction and find it out. So I had to just go 9 a.m. minus 623 and then I realized, well, when you borrow using um, time, you borrow an hour and then you got 60 minutes over here. And then I had to borrow again, like uh, I had 60 minutes, but I can't take three away from zero, so I had to turn it, I had to borrow. So if you can figure out how to do this thing with the time, you'll see it's 2.37 hours. Um, and why did I, why on earth did I care about the 2.37 hours? It's because that's this time interval. That means I can get, this is the very next, this is the very next time that the water hits 14. So I can add, this is 9 a.m. right here. I can add two hours and 37 minutes to 9 a.m. So I go ahead and do that. 9 a.m. plus two hours and 37 minutes. I get my second answer, which is 11.37 a.m. And then I'm gonna do kind of something similar. I know I can see from my graph that there's another um, low point right here at the 16th hour. And if I look on my grid, the 16th hour is actually 9 p.m. So then I can go backwards from 9 p.m. by two hours and 37 minutes, and I'm going to get that. Oops, I'm going to get that um, this other time when it hits 14 feet. And if I add two hours and 37 minutes, I'll get this time. So that's what I did here. The next low is at the 16th hour or 9 p.m. So I um, subtracted two hours and 37 minutes. I had to do that special math and I got 6.23 p.m. And then I added two hours and 37 minutes. Yeah, good times. And that's all I got for you.